It has to be the pigs. I think that's that's the best way to get rid of the a dead body. You starve a pig for five to ten days, right, until they get real skinny. They'll start squealing at you just because they're hungry at that point, right? And you give them a body to eat. They will destroy that in a matter of an hour. It's gone. All of it. It'll all be gone. All of it will be gone, right? So I think a uh, a pig is your best bet. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another beautiful episode of the Busty Buffalo Podcast. Uh, I've been waiting all week. I hope that you have been waiting all week. I've been waiting all week for you to see my beautiful face, to see these beautiful jugs. To, I mean, check this shirt out. I mean, I mean, this is a classic. If you haven't been a fan for a while, you know that this shirt's been in my closet for just a good minute. Look at that. Look how beautiful this little whore is, huh? Right? uh welcome back ladies and gentlemen this is gonna be a wonderful podcast just like every other single fucking week uh a little bit of a discussion before we get into our segments but um yeah so i I gotta get this out of the way if this is your first time listening if this is your first time watching uh definitely make sure to hit that subscribe if you're on youtube hit that subscribe uh make sure to like because it you know helps out way more than you actually know uh if you guys want any other, you know, if you have any other, other like uh, options or maybe some uh, some topics for me to talk about, always shoot me a comment, dude. It's never an issue. OK, uh, the more comments, the better. So if you guys are watching this on YouTube and you're just not commenting, why are you being weird? Why? Just go ahead. Comment something, anything, dude. It doesn't matter. Either way, if this is your first time watching or listening Make sure to fucking like us, follow us, you know, rate and review on whatever the fuck you're listening to. It's going to be fine. All right. Today's going to be okay. And uh, yeah, so that's basically all I wanted to, you know, get out of there before we actually start the show. And uh, yeah, I don't know, man. I hope all you guys are doing well. I know I am. I think uh, today's also going to be another beautiful day for me. I. I love Sundays just because I literally can choose not to do anything or I can choose to, you know, be productive and either or I'm still going to be okay, you know, but, uh, yeah, guys, you know, this week has been absolutely amazing. I'll be honest with you. Uh, hung out with some friends, did all that work stuff. You know, you know, what's important as hell, dude, on, on a serious note, when you are older and you're wondering Oh, how, why the hell is my week going by so slow? Why does it feel like my life is just consumed by work? Go ahead and do something during the week. I know it can be hard. You know, I can, I understand that you can, you know, get bogged down by work or something, or maybe your hours are like a little off and it just, it's, it's unfortunate or it's just inconvenient for you. But when you have shit to do during the week and you're not just focusing on work. Your anxiety is going to feel a lot better, dude. Like you're not, I mean, your anxiety is not going to fucking be there if anything, right? If you're constantly just, I don't know, if you're constantly just only focusing on work during the week, that's all your life is going to be consumed by, you know, you got to give yourself an opportunity to wind down at sometimes and just give yourself enough time to relax, dude, but have fun. You know, your week doesn't have to just be a work week. You know what I mean? I feel like 70 or 60% of us who have a job are working either eight to four or nine to five jobs. Um, and that's 40 hours a week, man. That's a lot of hours dedicated to just working. Okay. You know, in some other countries, you're only allowed to work. Maybe like, you know, they tell you you're only allowed to work like 30 hours. And even then you're probably working like 25 hours and just screwing off somewhere else. You know, it's not always the same case in any other country, but in America, it's you gotta you gotta work your ass off, man. You know, if you wanna live here, if you wanna live in the greatest country in the world, you gotta be able to fucking work, man. You gotta be able to do something, man. You can't everyone just can't be on OnlyFans wanting to show their goddamn fallopian lips all over the place, man. You gotta be able to put in some work. You think this world's just gonna give you all this money in the world for just showing off your puss? It ain't working like that, homie. All right, you got to freaking work hard or you got to get a BBL. I don't know, either or. You got to work hard or get a BBL if you, if you want to make it in this fucking country, okay? 
<laughs> but uh no so what what i uh what my my lady what my girlfriend and i janita we've been doing you know during the weeks we've been trying to kind of like do shit during the week so it doesn't feel like we're only working and just being consumed by work essentially you know it doesn't always have to be like that and it goes the same way for you guys you guys can do shit during the week so and plus when you do stuff during the week, it flies by, man. It helps you. It, it kicks off your week to a, if I'm doing something on Monday, for, let's say I'm hanging out with some friends or meeting with some friends at like after work and getting like something, your day is just going to fly by. Then you're going to realize, oh, it's already fucking Tuesday. You have something planned for Wednesday or Thursday or Friday. You also have things to look forward to during the week instead of just being like, all right, work day's done. Now I can, you know, like everyone go to the gym or whatever, make dinner fuck around watch netflix before i have to wake it up and do it all over again instead do stuff during the week man figure what out you figure some stuff out what you want to do I, I i don't know i feel like i'm preaching to the choir here but uh just listen to me guys it's fine all right you'll do okay just do some shit during the week and not just work but uh yeah it really helps me you know for example i think this past tuesday Janita and I met up with some friends and we watched the new movie Nope. Uh, not going to be any spoiler alerts or none of that shit. I'm not going to even remotely talk about what's in the movie. Um, it's just basically about aliens. You know, it's probably one of the first like it's probably one of the first alien movies that I've watched in a while that I was like. Well, it's my, what, what is this? Uh, what's his name? What is it? Uh, oh, my. What is his name? Um. Jordan Peele, the one who actually directed the movie. I was thinking, dude, literally, because I, I was thinking of Key and Peele. And I was like, no, it's not Michael Michael Peele. Then it's like, no, it's Michael Keegan Key or whatever. That's that's the other guy. That's his friend. But no, uh, Jordan Peele, who directed the, the movie, I think he did a fantastic job. I think he... There's some things about it in the movie that I was pretty confused about. You know, I kind of just didn't know what the hell he was aiming for or what the heck he was even trying to portray or what the message was behind a certain thing. Uh, if you guys watched it, I'm talking about the monkey thing. That's all I'm going to say. I, I have a theory on it and as to why it happened or whatever. Um, and the moral, moral of the story, I feel like I have, I have it down, right? But there's still some confusing things about it. But regardless, it was the first movie, a UFO movie, maybe in the, in the past like five years, because when was the last time you've actually seen a UFO movie that was, like, decent? You know what I mean? This is one of the first ones that I've seen in a, in a while that I was actually just pretty perplexed by. I just was like, holy shit. Um, was pretty good the way it was filmed. I was like, I feel like this is what aliens really are. It's not, like, people in the UFO. I think the UFO itself is the alien. That type of shit. You know what I mean? I was like, I could be with this theory you know what i mean either way if you guys want to go see it watch it it's honestly interesting as hell and um yeah but dude there's nothing like going to the movies getting a big ass box of popcorn not that dumbass little bag they give you just a cheap fucking waste of a bag you know you get the big ass box of popcorn because that's all that you're really waiting for and then you go to like a little grocery store before and sneak in some snacks Everyone does that, you know what I mean? But there's nothing like just winding back, not even remotely remembering what the hell is going on in your life and just paying attention to some beautiful art, you know? I just think that's probably the best thing about movies. Um, superhero movies, I, I don't know. I, I don't even know why I went there. My mind just thought about, because I went, I was in PA and then we saw a movie, Janita and I, we saw a movie with uh, my friend Aydin and, and Tyler. So shout out to Aydin and Tyler. Um, but we saw a superhero movie. The thing, I don't I, I get, I understand why people like superhero movies. You know, they're, they can be witty. They're funny. Um, you know, there's a lot of action and CGI and all that shit. I don't care. I really, I don't, I, if I can't follow it, if the, the fact that like, there's, what is it? The Avengers, the fact that you have to literally watch like, a thousand movies before leading up to the end of the Avengers. Like I don't want to put in that much time. I don't want to like really care that much. And I don't think I have the time to just watch all those fucking movies, man. I just think that's incredibly like rude 
You gotta, you gotta really fucking. I think these movies and these like these uh, movie production companies are like, how do we keep people's eyes on our shit forever? They're like, well, why don't we just make like so many of them so that they can't even keep up? That's what that is to me, dude. I can't keep up with the fucking superhero shit. I, if anything, I like Hancock with Will Smith. That's a superhero movie. No one ever talks about Hancock. And shout out to Will Smith. I know he's going through a rough time right now, but that was one of his good movies, man. I really liked Hancock. I watched that in the theaters like forever ago when it first came out. It was like PG thirteen. I had to go with a, I had to go with a, uh, or no, it was rated R or PG. Either either way, I I couldn't go by myself. I had to have an adult there with me. Um, but other than that, there, what other uh, Spider Man? I loved Spider Man, but. What's going on with like Thor and all this bullshit? I, I I don't I either way. I we went to go see Thor: Love and Thunder or Thunder whatever the fuck it was. I genuinely can't even remember. But the whole time I'm like, all right, fifty percent of this stuff is like almost like it's almost like an inside joke. Like you really had to have watched something or experienced something. You had to watch previous movies to understand maybe the jokes or some storylines, some backstories behind what the hell is really happening in the actual movie. So what I can't just sit down, watch the movie and just like encompass everything that I'm viewing. If I'm not getting 50% of it, I'm losing money. I'm not getting my money's worth. Okay. The movie at that point is not comprehensible for me. I, I there's just like, yeah, it's cool stuff. Wow. There's a bunch of crazy shits going on, but like, What's the purpose? What is the meaning behind all of it? It doesn't make sense to me. So that's why all these newer superhero movies I, I really don't get. Like, I think I saw some trailer, Stranger, what is it? A uh, trailer for like Doctor Strange or some shit. What the, who the fuck is Doctor Strange? That's so fucking weird to me. Either way, for all, for all the movie lovers out there, I know you guys love movies as much as i do okay i understand the aesthetic of going to the movie theater it's nice but uh i'm never going to be one of those guys who signs up for the membership i'm sorry but that's just not me i think i was uh i was getting um i was getting a i was getting a box of popcorn for janita and i or she was getting one and i think we we're just waiting in line and um i see i see someone just like go over to like an express lane it's like it's like onboarding onto a freaking airport onto an airplane at the airport they're like oh are you are you a prestige member oh yeah cut in front of all these poor people we're like dude this guy cuts in front of like a line of all these goddamn degenerates behind me you know and then he just gets a clean service or a full service or whatever the hell he gets i don't know how much you pay for it it doesn't even matter because i i didn't even glance to check i didn't even check i'm not gonna go online and check and see how much of the subscription is to amc you know amc we do movies right i don't know there's all that fucking branding and shit before the movie starts but i will never be that guy who will sign up for the uh the premium subscription for the movie theaters dude like hey man just wait a few weeks and wait until the russian leak comes out man you'll be okay you don't have to get it immediately when it comes out i understand maybe there's some benefits maybe your food is like 20 percent off or something but that's not worth it. Unless you're making stupid money, you just don't care anymore. You're like, fuck it, I want to go to the movies and be treated like a king. That I understand if you're just stupid rich. But even if I was rich, I would not be spending money on that. I'm too fucking cheap, dude. There's no way I'm going to be spending money on that. So that was baffling to me. I, I, I saw that and I was just like, hmm, interesting. People really pay for that kind of stuff, you know? But uh, yeah. I don't know, dude. I, I, either way, I enjoy the movies, man. That's probably the, the probably the the best part about the movies is going there blitzed out of your mind, fried as shit. You know, sneaking in some some of the best snacks that you can ever sneak in. Because I think I went up to the cash register and I was like, "Hey, how much for those uh, junior mints that are in the box?" She's like, "Um, yeah, it's like the normal price." <laughs> yeah. Yeah, can you tell me the what's the price? She's like, um, let me uh, let me check. <laughs> yeah, it's about five ninety nine. Five ninety nine for a box 
box of junior mints? Oh my god! I just I literally, I literally chuckled and I was like, I'm I'm okay, I'm fine, I'm I'm all right, dude. You know, I understand. I've someone told me before, no one makes the theater itself doesn't make the money on ticket sales. They make the money on being sponsored and uh, all the popcorn and all that shit. What people that you know buy all the food or whatever, you know the concession, this concession, whatever. I I don't I don't know. That's how they make their money. But to charge me five ninety nine. For a box of Junior Mints that... The box is this big, dude. The box is this fucking big. But how much do you think it's actually filled to? It's like this much. Literally, it's like less than a quarter filled. Probably like a, like a fifth of it is filled, dude. It's literally so small. You don't get your money's worth. And I, you know, and the reason why I asked was like, oh, wow, they keep the Junior Mints in the, in the refrigerator. And I was like, that was the only reason why I wanted to buy them. I was like, yeah, but chocolate when, when it's like cold especially junior mints it might be fucking banging so i just had to ask but 5.99 who do you think i am you think i'm a rothschild you think i'm a rockefeller dude what the fuck kind of money is that i definitely can pay for it but i will not no sh no sir no thank you i'm okay that that you can keep for the tesla owners you know what i mean i imagine i imagine tesla owners just driving to the movie theater and they're and, and, and you know there's someone in the back maybe like a broke friend or you know they're just traveling along you know the people in the front are like oh god what do you think you're gonna get at the movie theater today are you gonna are you gonna buy a box of junior mints do you know I, I think i'm gonna actually buy a whole two boxes of popcorn yes yeah that's basically what i'm going to buy yes yeah, okay and the person in the back is just like hey do you think we can stop at the grocery store and, and pick up some snacks so i can sneak it in like, oh, no, jolly good fellow. You're, you're cheap broke. I, I'll buy you something. Yes. You know, only fucking people who have the money for that shit will actually pay for it, dude. I I, I don't I don't have the, uh, the you know, fuck it kind of money, you know, like where I'm just like never in, in mentally thinking, in mentally just like not caring about it. Because when I think about it in my head, it's like I this is this is my this is my rationale when it comes to spending money. OK, especially being a, you know a foreign, especially being a European boy, you know, coming from a broke ass family. Um, this is my rationale. So anytime that something is decently expensive, I would instantly think, you know, I, I would ask myself, what would my mom do in this situation? And she's like, she would not buy it. Of course. What would my dad do in this situation? Go for the cheaper alternative. So usually that's my rationale every single time money come you know it, it comes into into the play where i have to think of buying it i usually don't it's always like an impulse where i feel like i am just not i am not i am conditioned to always be cheap and i don't know if that's like gonna be a thing all the time now in my life but from for right now it's doing me real good i'll be honest with you it's helping me save some cash it's helping me just be smart except last night late as hell I was fried out of my mind and I had, I bought a box of, uh, what was it? I, I, I bought a uh, Taco Bell box to be Uber Eats uh, delivered to me. That might've been the most bougie thing I have had ever done in maybe the past like week or so. But hey, you treat yourself, it's a Saturday night. What are you gonna do? My dad would've beat my ass if I did that, but I live alone. Anyways. <laughs> uh, yeah, regardless, dude, I, don't, I had so much fun at the uh, movie theaters, man. I, I genuinely believe that was like, I can't remember the last time you went to the movies either. That might have been the only other time was when I went to go see everything everywhere all at once. That was probably better than this Nope movie that I watched. Honestly, I, I love that movie. Everything about it was actually really good. The cinematography, the message behind it. I really think it really, res I, also being a foreign kid res resonated with me where it resonated, not resignated, Jesus Christ, resonated with me because it was just a, um, I don't know, man. It, it, you, you, if you are foreign and you come from an immigrant family, there's so many nuances that come with it and no one can really connect. You know, not everyone can really connect with the movie just like how I would. I know Janita, she was crying. And uh, so was our one friend because they're both, you know, first gen immigrants, man, come from like a foreign background slash immigrant background. 
And there's different types of nuances that come with it, like having to grow up at a young age, not being able to be, you know, a young woman, just being free. You had to mature at a young age, learn to cook, clean, all this shit. For what? It's like, it's like when you're, this is literally like crazy to me. Every foreign girl can relate to this, by the way. I don't know why, but foreign boys get treated like absolute kings. But immigrant, you know, foreign and immigrant girls get treated like they have to, you know, prepare for the uh, husband Olympics or something. Like they have to learn to cook and clean at age eight, right? They're doing hurdles in the goddamn kitchen, throwing ki- throw fucking throwing chicken into the oven, right? Doing like dishes and upon dishes every single goddamn day. For what, dude? Just to just to be prepared for some Olympics to like win a husband trophy or something? I don't get it, dude. Or I mean a wife trophy? It's insane. I like the thing is if I had a sister, I would be sitting on my ass growing up all day. I would have never done anything around the house. That's the saddest part. Because usually boys coming from an immigrant household are treated like kings, man. They don't do shit. Maybe there's a chore here and there, but they don't really do anything, really. It's majority of the time, it's the women who take care of 80% of the duties in the household. And if you, if anyone is out there listening, I feel for you, dude. I can relate a little bit. Uh, just because of Janita, she had to go through that, dude. My my girlfriend had to deal with that shit. You know, her whole like life growing up was practically just getting ready for the... Uh, for the uh, husband Olympics, she had to learn at like age seven and eight how to like sew and make food and whatever, dude. Fucking hilarious, though. <laughs> I I don't I don't get it, dude. I feel like uh, imagine like a little like a little immigrant boy just being taught the same shit. You know, it would be better for them because learning that at a young age will give you so much puss later on, dude. Just learning how to clean and cook, right? And then later on in life, when you know how to do all these things and you're like, oh, don't worry, babe. You relax. Go, you know, relax. If your lady comes home from work, you're like, listen, babe, just go go to the room, relax, watch Naruto or whatever the fuck you like to, I don't know, watch your anime hentai, right? I'll make us some dinner. I'll clean up real quick. You just relax. I'll let you know when dinner's ready. You're about to get the twin turbo Gokok 3000 V2 later that night because you did that shit. But instead, you let your woman do all the work, then she's too tired to give you the Gokok 3000 twin turbo V2. All right? That's why at a young age, you got to teach both your daughter and your son how to do shit around the house. Not just, I don't know, my mom would tell me shit to do around the house because it was just me and my brother. We both just had equal parts and and chores and shit. But even still, my mom had to do so much of the work, man. She did, like, all of the work in the house, practically. And I helped a good good bit, but there's this, like, weird foreign, like, non-written rule that a woman has to just basically clean and fucking cook and treat the house like it's, like, like, uh, like gold or something, dude. I, I don't understand. Like, it's weird as hell to me. I don't know. I feel like I'm resonated a lot with foreign women who are, you know, listening to this, but let's be honest, dude. It's just, it's just not fair. You know, that's why when I first moved here, immediately I had to live with Janita's parents or whole family. Uh, not that many people know that, but I lived with her. I lived with her in her house, uh, but it was easy for me. I'm Bosnian. Her family's Bosnian. We connected really well. There really wasn't much of like any tension in the house. A lot of the times, if anything, it, it was more more or less just like a good time. I didn't have any problems with their parents, whatever. But because I live there, I realized that I would have to step it up. But I didn't know how much Janita really was working until I moved, dude. Like I really didn't understand how much shit she was doing around the house until I lived there with her. That lady was a slave for a while, dude. I'll be honest with you. I would help her out. I would do the dishes. I'd clean for her. I'd do. I'd take out the trash. I'd, you name it, dude. Any anything that was bestowed upon her, I tried to help her like as much as I could. Okay, but that's also just you know, be a good fucking boyfriend, man. Be be a good you know, be a good husband. Help out because otherwise you're not gonna get that Gokok three thousand twin turbo V two. 
If you guys don't know what the Gok Gok 3000 Twin Turbo V2 is, I'm, I can't help you, okay? You're lost. You're lost in this world. Either way, just so you guys know, uh, that's the only reason why we resonated so hard with everything, everywhere, all at once, okay? And it, just so you guys know, this is where my brain goes, okay? We started talking about movies, started talking about Nope. Then we started talking about everything or whatever, the etiquette of, you know, being in a movie and all that shit, all the, the like the nostalgic feeling of being there. Then we started talking about everything everywhere all at once. And I started talking about how immigrant girls get treated like ass. I am, you, got, you, you guys, I also respect you for sticking with me throughout this and just really, really understanding that my brain is just on a tangent at all times. I know a lot of the, a lot of the people that I listen to are so well spoken. They think before they talk, but that's not me. I the thing is, I'll try to stop when someone asks me a, if someone asks me a detailed question, I'll have to sit there and think. But either even then, I'm sitting there thinking I'm distracted by something else. Like it's hard as fuck, dude. If someone could just give me some goddamn riddle and I'll be okay. But I. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, guys. Listen, I just know we're we're having a fun time. But I don't know. That was that for the movies, man. And then yesterday, I went golfing for the first time. Yes, me, Edo, went golfing, dude. I don't think you guys ever would have thought, you know, that I would ever go golfing, you know, in my life. But I did. You know, it was easy as shit. Not, I'm just kidding. It was so fucking hard, dude. I'll be honest with you. I had a few lucky shots. Well, I wouldn't say lucky, but like. There were good practice shots, I, I think. Like, I was just hitting the ball. I think on the first drive, I just, I hit the ball in the water because we were so close to the water. And my ball just curved to the right, and I hit it with a nine iron. Um, and then the second drive that we were on, or the second hole, I mean, or whatever the fuck. Yeah, second hole. I just hit it right on the green from the tee, dude. And it felt so good. Oh, my God. I... I understand why people get into golf. I understand why it's addicting. It's because you're with your friends. You're out in nature. It's scenic as hell. It's beautiful out. You're outside, dude. Like the fact that you're outside is all you want. It's all you need. You're you're out and about. You're with some buddies. You're having some drinks. I mean, I don't know, man. I've never had that much fun in my like in in a while where it was like. I didn't think it would be this fun. You know what I mean? I thought this was more or less like some shit old people do because it just gets like too boring and it's a, such a good like time killer. You know, we had, we did 18 holes by the way, and it felt like it was two hours. It was like four hours, four and a half or something like that. But the time flew by. I was with my two buddies. Well, it was my buddy and uh, his, you know, maybe his lifelong friend or something. I never met him before, but instantly hit it off had a good time with both of these dudes right and uh even this dude this place had like the I, i'm a huge fan of hard cider um especially if it doesn't have uh like sugar or anything like all that bullshit in it if it's like regular organic cider no added sugars it's like way better than beer i i after a while you, your beer just tastes like like beer piss like it just tastes like it's liquid bread it tastes like ass it's not as good as it used to be when you were like growing up. And then when you get older, it's, it just falls off, dude. Unless you're like getting it from the tap, like beer from the tap, especially at a decent brewery is like, it's, it's like, it's like drinking. It's like having salt and pepper beer to go in like a full season Italian season beer, right? You're getting your full package, dude. You're not just getting some bland ass taste. You actually have some diversity with your drink and not just some bullshit, right? But either way, we got there. I got even. I got some drinks for myself, man. I got hard ciders on our second on our second round our of holes on our second nine holes. Second round of nine holes, I got some hard cider for myself. That was so fun, dude. I you got. We also had golf carts because we're not walking. I'm not walking. I'm not walking. I'm not walking. Either way, that's such a bad Christopher Walken part. All right. I didn't walk because who cares, man? I also just wanted to ride a golf cart for the first time. That was fun as shit. I was hitting every bump imaginable, dude. Any any bump I saw, I tried to go over that. And the thing is, this golf course wasn't the craziest golf course. It wasn't really like 
people were monitoring what you're doing and stuff. It wasn't like a fancy place. It was more or less like just a whole bunk town place where you can golf, but it was also just good vibes, man. It was scenic too, man. I, I just, I'm a big nature guy and where we went was very like scenic. It was just nice. Mount Vernon, Washington just has the, some of the best views, honestly. Uh, it was the big lake, golf, big lake golf course. You guys can go check it out. It's literally, just look it up. Um, it's not the best golf course, but as a starter, like just a starter game for me, my first ever game, I had so much fun. I genuinely did. And also the times where you get to hit the drive, you get to use the driver just once in a while, man. It feels good. Oh, it feels good. I was getting my form down a little bit more, just trying to, you know, get my get my flow and technique going just because I would try to mimic what my friends were doing. You know, it's hard to when you I mean, and then also my friend Mackie was just nice enough to kind of give me some pointers, just really help me out. And even his friend as well was giving me some pointers too. just since I was a beginner. I appreciate that shit, man. I understand maybe the community, the golfing community might not be like it's probably not toxic at all. I don't think it's toxic or maybe just because of where I went. I don't I don't think it's toxic or it doesn't seem toxic. But I, I enjoyed it, man. I literally had some of the best, like, minutes of my life there. And plus, I don't know, dude. I, I I genuinely think when you're with some buddies, man, you're fucking drinking, hitting some balls, dude. You're, you just forget everything. You genuinely just, you're not, you're not in reality anymore, dude. And I don't know. I think that's, I think that's what's important in life. Just something to distract you from all this bullshit. Just have fun. Do some, just do some fun stuff. So if you ever thought about going golfing and you thought, man, that's not for me. I don't golf. That's not for me. I, I can't do that. Nah, I can't do that. That's for white people. I'm not rich. Uh, you can go to places that are hella cheap. I think we paid for two people. I paid two for two people in our second round. It was 34 bucks or 30. It would be $31 for nine holes. I imagine at other places it's pretty expensive. I get it. There's nice paved roads and all this shit where you can drive and it's smooth. I get it. I honestly get it. But for like two people and $31, that's not expensive at all. You know, and if you want, you can go on Facebook market, look up uh, golf sets. I was looking it up earlier because I'm trying to buy my own. I was using a buddy's. I was renting out like we're borrowing his for the actual game. And I looked up on Facebook market to see like how much golf sets really are. They're about like 30 bucks it's not, or 30 to 80 bucks, you know, like some Used ones could be old, but if you're just starting out, why would you even get a whole new set? Just get a used ones. Golf balls are hella cheap. If you want to buy them online too, you get a box for just practically nothing. But it is an ex it, it is a pretty expensive hobby to get into. Probably not as expensive as like snowboarding or skate or uh or skiing, because you have to like buy memberships for like, you know, the all the national, like, you know, uh what do you call them? Mountains. I don't fucking know what you ever, whatever you fucking snowboard and ski down, you know, but like, that's an expensive hobby, but golfing, do you just need some fresh, like here, I'll show you the, check the shirt out that I was wearing yesterday, dude. Not, not only was I wearing Wrangler jorts, Wrangler jorts. Okay. Uh, that, mind you that that's bold, dude, especially around these parts. You can't be doing that all the time, but look at this fine ass shirt I was wearing yesterday, dude. If you look closely, look at it. Look what's on. Look, look what's on there. That's Tabasco sauce, dude. When was the last time you ever seen someone wearing this drippy ass shit on a golf course, dude? So I, ha I had to go all out, you know. So I had so much fucking fun, dude. It was it was a blast. Anyone that's that's been thinking about going golfing, try it out. Just try it out, man. You're gonna enjoy yourself, okay? But yeah. There's probably more shit that I could probably talk about during this week and or whatever, but um, I don't know. I'm blanking at this point. We're getting to that point of the uh, of the podcast, ladies and gentlemen. If you are new to new to the podcast, this is a new segment that we've been implementing the past two weeks now, and I've been I'm not. This is probably the most excited I've been today because. I got some good, you know, good discussions. I think, you know, I usually, usually I get some good topics that get thrown at me, but today's segment that we're going to be talking about and that we're going to be enduring is we asked the AI overlords, give us something to talk about. 
okay? And I still have yet to figure out a good name for this for this segment. I think I was I was wondering like ask the gods or AI overlord. I I something like that, right? But this is all it is, okay? If you're new, ladies and gentlemen, if you're this is your first time even like listening to the podcast, this segment is all about asking AI what the hell we should talk about. I ask AI list five things that I should be talking about something thought provoking, hilarious, anything that could be, you know, just the topic of discussion for a, for a, a, a good conversation, right? Or in, for a podcast. And uh, AI always delivers, my dude. Okay. If you guys, in the place where I go and I get this, you know, these questions from is it's copy.ai, literally C O P Y dot AI, type it in your goddamn search browser and search browser type it into your goddamn search engine you'll find it it'll help you if you are also a digital creator it'll help you with so much shit man it'll help you with blog ideas it'll help you with social media captions it'll help you with product detail captions anything that you basically have trouble with or you think it'll help you save enough save you enough time to where you can do your whatever you're doing your creation when i don't know it'll make you more efficient that's all the ai is doing right now dude I think it's one of the most resourceful things you can really get into at this at this point of your life where you're probably more, what's the word, burnt out, right? People in this life get burnt out easily. It's It just happens, dude. So what AI does, you can look up so many AI softwares online or whatever coded AI like websites that can help you with so much shit, dude. And it's there, it's free, use it. It's a calculator that's going to go so, so fucking far than more than a calculator ever would. It's there to help you, dude. And for example, I use copy.ai to help me figure out five discussions to talk about and just talk shit about to you guys. Okay. So if you're new to this, welcome. If you're here for a while and you're ready to talk about, you know, ask what the AI overlords want us to talk about, it's time. Okay. I think I think this segment should be let's ask the let's ask the AI gods or let's ask the AI overlords. Let's ask the AI over, overlord. I don't even know, dude. Either way, let's get into the first question, man. I every single week they fucking throw us some crazy ass shit. Okay, the first question. AI hitting us really hard, dude. I mean, Jesus Christ, dude. I I, I don't know where they come up with this. I swear to God, this is not. All these discussions, these topics, it's not me, dude, okay? The first question is, what's the best way to get rid of a dead bot? I mean, the amount of times I've seen Breaking Bad, and you would think, you know, let's type in, let's tie, you know, dump him in hydrochloric acid. Uh, you got to get a specific type of plastic bin so it doesn't, you know, melt through, right? You know? But then what do you do? What do you do with... All of that liquid, all that gunk, all that waste. You know what I mean? You can't just dump it somewhere. I mean, you probably could, but it's still something that you have to go and get rid of, right? In this world, you can't just make waste evaporate, right? It's not water. You can't just leave it out in the sun, just fucking helps it go away, right? That's not how things work. You're going to have to eventually dump that somewhere, right? So I think that's up there with one of the best ways to get rid of a dead body burying a dead body is so goddamn unoriginal you know erosion happens eventually that body is gonna fucking emerge in the surface somewhere and some kid playing pokemon go is gonna go in his backyard and find a, a skull there right so you can't be burying a, a body anymore i mean feeding it to the pigs that might be just be the best way to be honest with you if you're in a, if you know about the italian mafia they did that shit all the time they would feed uh human you know human bodies to the pigs all the time and they just if they're hungry enough they'll eat right they'll fucking eat dude okay um um what other ways could you fucking what if you ate the body that's probably one way you can definitely get rid of the body if you just edit yourself if you really are determined and you you know maybe you're a butcher or something you fillet the skin and Fuck, but then what do you do with the skin, dude? I, I mean, I don't even know. Pour, tur turn into pork rinds? <laughs> oh, fuck, dude. 
This is a fucked up discussion, I'll be honest with you. I, I'm telling you, this isn't... This is AI, okay? They've asked me these questions. It's not me. I promise you. I don't think of this kind of stuff. But it's important. It's important because AI has asked us. It's obviously an important, funny, thought-provoking, controversial topic. So... I genuinely believe oh, it has to be the pigs. I think that's that's the best way to get rid of the, a dead body. You starve a pig for five to ten days, right, until they get real skinny. They'll start squealing at you just because they're hungry at that point, right? And you give them a body to eat. They will destroy that in a matter of an hour. It's gone. All of it. It'll all be gone. All of it will be gone, right? So I think a uh, a pig is your best bet. Or a tiger. I don't know. If, I don't know if a tiger will eat a dead body, though. I don't think they would. I think tigers eat. They eat or they hunt to eat. So if you kind of just throw them something to eat, and it's like, I don't think they'll get in really a big enjoyment out of uh, killing so or eating something that's already killed. You know what I mean? Or maybe I'm just stupid as shit. I genuinely don't understand. I, 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 I wouldn't. If I was a tiger and someone just gave me a dead body that was ten days old, I wouldn't eat it. I have standards as a tiger. Okay. So yeah, I think definitely the best way to get rid of a body is uh, it has to be pigs, 100%, okay? On to the next question. AI overlords, what do you ask of me? What do you ask of me? Is that a good segment topic or title? Either way, we'll keep going. I'll think of something, man. We're getting there. We're freaking working on it, okay? We're, we're, this is progress, okay? Second question that the AI overlord gods, lords, and... And, you know, antichrists want us to know, right? What do they want us to know? Yeah, I wonder if AI is like just evil, you know? It's 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 derived from some something evil. Either way, what if the universe... This is the second question, by the way. What if the universe is actually a giant computer simulation? The AI overlords are just hitting us with fucking bangers today, dude. What if the universe is actually a giant computer simulation? Well, if that's the case, people are just going to be doing whatever they want. You know, I, I genuinely believe if people found out like, yeah, literally everything around you, everybody else around you is literally a video game. You know, what do you think is going to happen? People are going to go nuts. The purge is going to happen. People are going to start killing each other. People are going to just fucking commit suicide. And, it, and people are just going to be more uh, risk-taking. You know, they're going to want to take more risks in life. I think if that's the case. I, I The reason why a lot of people probably don't take a lot of risks in life is because they feel like their life is has a lot of meaning, you know, has a lot of uh, has a lot of purpose. So a lot of people tend to not be risky in life. They, t they tend to be more comfortable because they uh, appreciate life, at, you know, when it's the most comfortable. You know, people who take risks are businessmen, entrepreneurs, willing to lose money in life, and they don't really have much to lose. But people who aren't taking a lot of risks, they have a lot to lose. They got family, they got a lot of shit to pay for, they got a lot of bills. If you take a lot of risks in life, then, you know, you might not have a good backup plan or something. You know, a lot of people say, you can't have a backup plan, man. You you got to fucking, you know, like like I was watching, um, I was watching a comedy show and this uh, one comedian was talking about, you know, you know, I have this one job and I really want to get rid of it and kind of want to do stand up full time. And, uh, but I'm like, yeah, dude, but stand up isn't paying you like good money, dude. I feel like stand up today is still paying like wages in the early 2000s. Like for someone to believe that you have to put a hundred percent into stand up comedy and nothing else, I think that's not okay. You have to have not a, not a backup plan. But you have to have a side hustle. You have to do some shit on the side to make some money or you have to have like some other thing that you do to make money. Otherwise, you can't just fully immerse yourself into the stand-up world unless you're broke as shit, single as hell, you have nothing to lose and you're like, fuck it, I'll just do it, you know? Then I totally understand that, that fucking point of view. But I was listening to this comedy show. They're saying, you can't have a backup plan. You, you just can't. What do you mean you can't have a backup plan? Dude, it's life. It's not like... It's not like some privileged fucking video game where you're like, well, I guess the round is over. I'll just restart. No, dude, you have to be smart. You have to be. The only the only people that say, oh, you can't, you can't have a backup plan in life. Those are the people that have made it already. Those are the people that already made it and they, they literally just are rich as shit, 
right? And they're telling other people, you, you can't just, you have to commit 100%. And like, yeah, I, I understand. I totally, I, I completely get it. But uh, I also have to uh, live, you know, and understand that there's certain things in life that are putting me at risk and I have to fucking have a backup plan. That's just how it is. Either way, I'm getting sidetracked here. But yeah, if it was a huge, if the universe is a, an actually a giant computer simulation, I mean, I don't know, dude. I mean, that would explain so much. That would explain so much as to why there's a bunch of shit going on with UFOs. You know, it's almost like they're like, you know, like they're our overlords, right? Like they're just watching us and shit, making sure the simulation's okay. Maybe that's like the tech support. I don't fucking know. UFOs are just a customer service and they're like wandering around making sure everything's okay. They're the technical analysis analysts or whatever in the, in the air. I don't fucking know. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, I think if the world, if the universe is just a giant computer simulation, then I don't know. Nothing matters then, dude. Just do whatever the fuck you want, you know? Divorce your wife. Have a second family. Because nothing, nothing else will matter, dude, you know? That's what would happen if, if the world was a, a giant commu computer simulation, you know? Either way, ladies and gentlemen, next question. What else? What are the overlords, the AI overlords, the gods asking of me? Third question. How to make a girl fall in love with you? I mean, the question should be how to make a girl not fall in love with you. <laughs> oh, it's so hard. You know what I mean? Uh, how to make a girl fall in love with you? Dude, just be yourself, man. You know? That's probably the best advice you could ever give to someone for, for that. Literally. How do you make a girl fall in love with you? Be yourself, dude. You're not, if you're, if you're yourself, no, not every girl is going to fall in love with you. The right ones will. The actual real, the real girls will actually fucking fall in love with you. The ones that will actually want to be with you will fall in love with you. Right? If you act like some other dude, you know what I mean? You're acting like, like, I don't know, like you're almost like uh, putting on a, a facade, right? You're putting on a, like a, like a safety screen for whatever reason maybe you're too scared to be yourself around somebody or whatever i don't fucking know but in life you have to be yourself it's hard to be sometimes you know what i mean i mean for me i i i'm 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 i am crucially myself all the time to the point where it might offend some people you know uh, excuse me it might even offend some people but i don't care dude like if if you're if you're at my age at this point, I'm 25 years old, man. I'm still a young kid, but I'm not. I don't know if I'm still a kid, but I'm still a young man. All right, and I realized that you're not going to get anywhere in life if you're pretending to be somebody you're not. All right, you're gonna you're not going to have a good time. You're it's going to be on your conscience how you just you are so insecure or you're not confident enough in yourself to just act who like who like who you really are and it's tough i understand man especially when you're meeting people for the first time and you're wondering damn are these people gonna judge me for who i really am are they gonna you know whatever I, you name it but that doesn't matter at the end of the day dude you still have to be yourself and if you want a girl to give you that gawk gawk 3000 twin turbo v2 you're gonna have to be yourself and no girl is going to give you that Gawcock 3000 Twin Turbo V2 if she's not in love with you. And she's not going to give you that Gawcock 3000 Twin Turbo V2 if she's not in love with you because of you being yourself, all right? It's not going to happen, bro. You're going to have to be yourself. Even if you're a weird, nerdy, autistic fucker, man, like me, right? You're going to have to be yourself regardless. Otherwise... What, like, what are you doing, man? Just, like, fuck... Like, I, I, I don't... The, the people who, like... I'll see a different side of them come out when they're with a specific, you know, type of people. Like if I'm, if they're with me, they act a certain way, but if they're with another group, they act like a whole, whole different person. I don't understand that bullshit. I don't think that's okay. I don't think that's all right for anyone to act like that. If you're not yourself, man, you're just a fucking waste, dude. Just be yourself. Love yourself. Take care of yourself. Please yourself if you're alone, you know, if, if you're not, love your significant other so she can please you or love your significant other so he can please you either or him or her. I don't discriminate, dog. 
I ain't gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna call fucking girls sluts, dude. They gotta, guys gotta put in some work too. You know what I'm saying? Either way, I'm, I, I digress. How to make a girl fall in love with you? Just be yourself, man. Be yourself, right? Show your true heart. Even if you're a little racist Nazi boy, show your, show your true self if that's who you are. Because you're going to find a Nazi, racist Nazi girl to fall in love with you, right? You can be a member of the Ku Klux Klan or whatever. I don't know the fuck you're into. You're racist, right? But a girl will still want to fall in love with you if you're yourself. You're going to eventually find that. You're going to find that, right? And not with pure luck, but determination and belief in that being yourself will help you find that person. It'll happen, okay? On to the next. On to the next question, guys. Wow. Okay. Um, wow. All right. The rise of robots and AI. What kind of impact will this have on human life? Oh my God. I anytime I get asked this like kind of question, I I, I go to like why technology is gonna be amazing for us. But I think the normal person goes to uh how will technology destroy our lives? <laughs> uh, the rise of robots. I mean, that's terrifying. I, I don't think like there's maybe in like 50 or 60 years, we're going to have like robots patrolling the streets like RoboCop, right? You're going to be, you're going to be going down to the grocery store to pick up a Snickers bar at after hours. It's like a curfew at 9 PM or some shit. And like, you'll see a robot going down the street and you'll scan the street and you'll see like just a big red laser scanner, right? And you have to hide behind a car. But imagine you get caught and he's like, civilians, stay indoors. Civilians, stay indoors. And he just fucking goes off. Countdown between one, two, three. And you, I don't know. I don't fucking, I, I, you know, you guys seen RoboCop. You seen what happens when they show the robot to everybody in that press conference and the robot just goes off and starts murdering people, right? That I'm afraid of. That I'm afraid of. I'm afraid of militarized robots. Um, <laughs> you know, also, by the way, do you guys see this fade? You know, you see this haircut? I went to the same goddamn Syrian that I went to two weeks ago who, who fucking hooked me up, dude. And he hooked me up once more. Either way, I digress. I, uh, I'm getting off topic here. Um, but uh the rise of robots and ai i mean robots will definitely just be the end of us i think they will not only kill the lifeline of our our money like there's no point of customer service is all going to be robots at one point you're not going to have to deal with you know i imagine not having to deal with karens anymore seriously if if, if everything is you know run by a robot or all all customer service jobs like, imagine if all customer service jobs were controlled by robots. You would never see another video of a Karen going off in, in Starbucks. Like, just, you know, having, like, an opioid meltdown. She's been fucking taking Xanax for, like, the past two years because she's having a midlife crisis. And she realizes the husband that she's married to uh, is gay or some shit. So she goes to a Starbucks to fucking yell at a, a sweet old little high schooler. You're not going to see that anymore. Right? Robots are just going to be, like... That'll be 520, right? I fucking hate this service. Every time I come here, you guys don't understand. You're not like, you're, it's almost like you're not human. That will be 520, please. You know, you'll never see another video, dude. You'll never see another Karen video in a, cuss, in, in, in a restaurant just cussing somebody out, right? It's not going to happen. Maybe that's a huge positive. That's a nice <laughs> one positive from a robot, I guess. But, uh, obviously double-edged sword because all those people would be losing their their jobs you know but uh at the same time uh yeah you could become a software engineer and engineer robots in the future then i don't know whatever is the most demanding industry fucking go there dude I, that's just that's all that's going to happen really shit jobs are going to be taken over by robots because nobody wants that job and what's the point of people asking for raises every like five years they're like I flip burgers and I fucking put shit in a, in a microwave because I was taught how to do it. And I want, I want $20 an hour. That's what I want. It's like, dude, I, just, hey, let's fucking figure out the robots already because I'm not, I don't want to pay these people anymore. That's what corporations want, dude. 
They don't want to pay you anything, dude. They're going to put robots in there for because to save millions and billions of dollars. What's the point? What's the point? There's not going to be HR anymore. There's, oh yeah, oh yeah, I was, uh, oh yeah, I heard this story. It was in McDonald's one time and somebody fucked me in the back without my permission. I mean, there, nothing's going to happen like that anymore. That never happened, by the way. I was just, you know, throwing a fake story out there. But like, you're not going to have that shit. No one's going to be getting molested in the McDonald's anymore. And the fucking, no man, no creepy manager is going to be looking down your shirt. You're just going to have robots in that fucking place. I digress. But with AI, I think life will be better, man. It's, it's just going to help us. It's going to make it so much easier to live. Um, it's helping me right now. I literally don't have to think of discussions to talk about. I just ask AI and they just give me five good ones, right? And uh, plus, I just, what's the point of talking about shit that's in the news, man? I understand trending topics are always, it's good to talk about it because it's trendy. Everybody's talking about it. But dude, when fucking thousands of people are talking about the same thing, what other thing can you literally say that will separate you from from their opinion on that? You know what I mean? So I'm not talking about whatever mainstream news and all that bullshit. So I ask AI to help me. And look at this. Look where we are. Dick's hard as shit, right? Having a good old time. Wet as hell. God. Okay. So uh, what kind of impact will this have on human life? It'll have a huge negative and a huge positive impact. We're going to lose jobs, dude. People are going to fucking die. People are going to just disappear. You're not going to... Robots are going to have to eat too, right? There's like that one robot. This might... It's, this is crazy. I, I, there's a thing where... Oh, I read it years ago, so I don't want to like misspeak on it, man. There's a specific robot that feeds on like dead human bodies or some shit for fuel. Um, That could be false. So Google that. It might be wrong. I don't fucking know. I mean, I'm just spewing shit. I feel like I'm talking like Joe Rogan. He'll just say some shit and there's fact checkers and shit who will, you know, prove him wrong. But either way, that could be that could be true. I don't I don't fucking know. <laughs> but uh yeah, check that out. Dude, there's probably robots who are just gonna eat homeless people like in the streets of San Francisco, right? They're gonna they're just gonna detect a fucking body that looks dead, right? It's just gonna be a homeless guy just nodded out on whatever. They're just gonna eat him while he's just Fucking high as shit, right? You're gonna be like, mom. <laughs> he's gonna have like some he's gonna feel like something lifting him up, almost like he's gonna have like a like a flashback of him being on a couch, falling asleep on a couch, and you know, his mom picking him up to take him to his room, right? He's gonna have like a flashback while that's happening, but all it is is a robot that's just lifting him up into like a fucking gauntlet of like sharp metal teeth, right? He's like he wakes up, he's like, Mom, is that you? And it all you hear is, right? And his body is just being mutilated. Anyways, I'm going too far. But yeah, how it's going to impact this is going to impact this like how like everything always does. There's negatives and positives. But uh, it's going to be your decision on whether you want it to be uh, to impact you positively or negatively, I think. I, I believe that, you know, I, I, I believe that wholeheartedly. People are going to, you know, in the future going to be like, robots are so bad. They, they they do everything for us and we don't have to do anything. They're so fucking bad. It's like, yeah, but there, it's there's positives too, man. Seriously, it just depends on how you want to look at it. But uh I don't I I don't like the idea of robots. I, I think I'm gonna be dead by the time they get so advanced. They're gonna be walking around, you're not gonna be able to notice like which one's which one's not a robot, right? Like I'm so glad I'm not gonna be alive then. And if I am, fuck it, man. I'm just I, I'm just gonna uh I'm just gonna get a, I'm just gonna get one just to have it around the house and shit. I come home from work and I'm just pissed as hell. And I'm like, get over here. Get the fuck over. And they just walk over. I don't know if it's gonna be a guy or a girl. Maybe it'll be a, you know, maybe it'll be like a uh, you know, a non-binary robot or something. Just it just looks like a guy and a girl at the same time, has tits but like hair all over her body, right? But she comes over. And I, I, I tell her to assume the position and I just fucking roundhouse her in the head after a long, hard day. That would be the best use I can get out of a robot, to be honest with you. That's, uh, yeah. Yeah, I can see that being a thing in the future. Hell yeah, dude. Fuck robots. I'd kick the shit out of one in the head if I can just, you know, if I could take my stress out. Either way, I think the rise of robots in AR are going to have a huge positive impact, but... I think it might have a less of a negative impact, to be honest with you. I don't think it's going to be as scary as people think it is. Uh, but yeah, 
I don't know. Moving on. What is the most important thing you've learned in life so far? God damn, AI is asking some deep ass questions, man. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck. I don't know why. I swear, sometimes like after when you when you curate some like you generate some, you know, uh, some topics like this, I feel like the AI learns what you're going for after a while. Like you have an, I have a specific account for, you know, the AI software that I use to help me with this. Right. But I feel like it's slowly starting to learn like what matters to me. You know what I mean? So like the fact that it asks me like how to make a girl fall in love with you, I think it's basically asking because I've basically fallen in love, you know, the fact that it's asking me what I've learned in my life. I've literally been contemplating like so many times in my life, like what's truly the biggest thing that I've learned so far. And either way, I think it's slowly other than the dead body, getting rid of getting rid of getting rid of the dead body probably is one of the ones where I'm like, all right, not a murderer, but I've seen a lot of murder shows. We could talk about this, right? But uh, the last and final questions the AI, the AI overlords ask of me. Is uh, what is the most important thing you've learned in life so far? Oh, man, I'm going to get hippie. I'm going to get really hippy dippy here for you guys. Genuinely, what I think the most important thing in life um, that I've learned so far is. Um, probably just having empathy and being open minded, dude. There's times where. It's not needed, and I feel like a lot of people don't really have to be empathetic all the time. Because it's almost overdoing it at times where it feels unnatural, right? Um, that's why a lot of the times comedy is so nice for me. Because I don't have to constantly think about being empathetic towards someone. Because my way of affection or my, my way of just diminishing, you know, a shitty situation that could be empathy. That might trigger you to trigger someone to be empathetic towards someone. I instantly result to a joke. Because some people might find it, you know unamusing or it might just be you know not the right time to say the joke but i think it's a way of coping for things you know um but either way i think in life it's it's good to be empathetic having compassion and being open-minded because a lot of the times man you get into arguments with people or maybe you see things in, in people that you know piss you off or they act a certain way but in in that moment your first reaction is to be like oh fuck this guy i'm not, I'm not i don't want to talk to this guy he's a you know, fuck him. Who cares? Right. But it's easy to do that. It's hard. It's harder to just like, be like, Hey, what, I wonder why this guy is acting like this. Why is he, why is he this certain way? Like, why is he okay? Like, has he dealt with some things, you know, like that's not the first reaction people get out, like out of themselves when the, that type of shit happens, you know? So let's say you see someone in, in traffic and you know, they, they get in, they're like riding someone's ass. You see them yelling at each other back and forth or whatever, like in traffic. And me, I don't get mad at tra in traffic at all. Like if anything, I, I tell someone, you know, like in the glass, like when they're, if, if I'm at an intersection at a stop sign or some shit, I'm supposed to go, but they go ahead of me. I'm just like, you know, I just be like, I'll just say some shit, but it's never like me getting out of my car and making a big ass scene. Right. But when that stuff happens, like, What's the, what your first initial reaction is like, damn, look at these fucking maniacs, you know, but why are they like that? Why, why, why did he get provoked that easily? You know, like, is he, what's going on in, the, in his home? Like what, like, is he upset? Is he depressed? Is he on pills? Like that type of shit runs through my, my brain a lot of the times, you know? And it's majority of the times when some shit happens, especially in the, in the news, some crazy shit happens or whatever. My first initial reaction is to just wonder why, why is that happening? You know, what is the root of the cause? Like, why, why is this happening? And how can I be more empathetic towards this person? Right. I, maybe it's a letdown at times where people would like you to just agree. You know, it's almost playing like devil's advocate at times, but you really, you really have to be open-minded in this world, man. You have to be, you have to be empathetic towards others and you have to fucking be compassionate. It's just how it is. So that's probably the most important thing I've learned in life so far is having empathy, compassion, and and uh, being open-minded for other people because really what you think is never really the case at all for people's lives, you know?
you think you see someone in you think you see someone in a Tesla, you think, damn, they're rich as fuck, or or whatever. Or or they could be in completely in debt. You know, they just bought that car, financed it. They just want to have that outlook on life. Maybe they want to keep that that status quo, right? And you never know what's what that person is going through. What like, but having empathy and compassion like helps you understand that type of shit. And I really think that gets you far in life. I, I don't think you're never gonna go farther if you're just closed minded, selfish as shit uncompassionate have no love for anybody no doesn't you know if you if that's who you are i get it maybe you just only have love for your family but i mean your family can fuck you over whenever they want to just because their blood doesn't mean they're cool you know what i mean you gotta treat everybody else like their fucking family is you know hippy dippy as that sounds it's, it's how it is you know that's what uh that's what life's about okay other than that dude ladies and gentlemen i Fucking, I don't know, every single week I got, I love this segment. I, I'm going to keep it in here. I might also go back to uh, prank calling because that's always fun as shit. I miss doing voices and messing with people. So that might come back next week. Be on the lookout for that. Uh, but one of my favorite segments of the show, dudes, we get to wind down a little bit, watch some TikToks, have some fun, you know, all that gay shit. So why don't we just get into it? What do you guys say? Huh? So we got our first fucking video of the day. Uh, caption of Dutch Bros employees be like. Let's go. Oh my gosh, is that a new hat? Where'd you get that hat from? Oh, I love your piercing. To be honest, I in my life have never experienced such weird positive co uh, customer service until I came to Washington and I, and I tried Dutch Bros. Dude. I don't understand why the motherfuckers are so happy. I don't get it. I'm there having a fun time. I'm with I'm with my girlfriend or they're just getting a drink. But you're all up in my face, super goddamn happy. I I don't I think it's almost like forced positivity. It's and the thing is Janita worked at Dutch Bros too for maybe like a week and she realized everyone there, it's like a cult. They're all fucking super happy, trust fund kids. Just working through the drive-thru. Oh my god, I love that hat. Where are you guys? So what are you guys doing today? Ah. Oh yeah, we're just, you know, visiting family. Ah, yeah, that's so nice. Yeah. Oh my god. I mean, I mean, what else are you guys gonna be doing today? I mean, that's so fun. What did you guys order? A mango black? Oh yeah, that's my favorite. That's my favorite. I mean, honestly, I, if you guys look at the menu, it's one of the best honor menu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, do you guys want a straw? Okay, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I can't deal with that shit, dude. It's like, it's too much. Here's my order. Get it done. Give it to me. Fuck off. That's all I need. That's all I want. I'm not asking for too much. I'm not asking, not asking for too little. Either way. Next TikTok. I added some stronger springs to my catapult. I'm about to test it out again. Uh, and when he says catapult, for all the, uh, you know, listeners... Uh, highly suggest you go onto YouTube and just watch. Okay, it's good for you. Go on to YouTube, watch the TikToks with your boys. But either way, when he says catapult, he's he has a squirrel catapult. So I've seen the first two seconds of each of these TikToks. So I don't know what the fuck is going on, but I'm excited to see a squirrel get thrown if it's gonna be thrown. Let's watch. Oh, he was just showing. Okay. All right. Well, fuck. Okay. Never mind. I thought I was going to see a squirrel get cat catapulted, dude. Anyways, he just fucking showed you a preview. Also, check out the black socks with the Nike Nike sandals, dude. This guy just living life. I think that's a bush light can right there as well. I mean, good boy. What a great guy. All right. Next TikTok. What a waste. God damn, I mean, dude, for the people who say wrestling is fake, watch this shit. Oh, shit! Yeah. Oh, my God, you know when you see a fellow white brother just fucking doing some embarrassing dumb shit like that? You cringe a little bit, right? You just... Oh. I feel bad for the guy, dude. You just feel bad for him. People say real rest. Uh, what is it? People say professional wrestling is fake. Yeah, probably the professional wrestling where you know they're like popular as hell. The WWE. That's oh, that's all that's scripted. 
right? But this shit's like underground wrestling. This is all real. All of this shit's real. My dude just got kicked in the fucking head, double kicked in the head like it was nothing. I mean, and and then he's, he's, he's this is like, this is literally inter- the entertainment business in a nutshell, dude. You start from the bottom, do it like going to fucking events like this, thinking it's going to make you popular, but it's just going to fuck your life over and break your face, right? You think, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it big, dude. I'm going to make it somewhere, right? It's, Shit like this happens, and you're like, yeah, let's go back to the sales job, huh? Let's go back, yeah. There's so much... There's so much going on in this video, and I I just, like... First off, he's... he's this, is, this is his bedroom, okay? Um, that rod, by the way, is literally a branch off of a fucking skinny tree. I don't know what... I don't even think that's a real fishing rod. Um, he just has it connected to a bobber. What that water is, I don't know. It looks like a like just water filled with fishing food, and he's sleeping in this room. I so interesting. And he catches he catches a fish in his bedroom. I mean, incredible stuff. I'm uh, incredible stuff, dude. Asians are just better, dude. Asian is Asians are Asians, dude. A- after like an hour of just spitting out words, I just start to fuck up. Asians are just better. It's just that's just what it is, dude. And you have to live with it. I don't know why any of us don't have a hole in our bedroom filled with water and fish. I I, I just that should be everywhere. Fuck. Oh my god, dude. Imagine moving to a new school and everyone's trying to like realize who you are. They're trying to figure uh you out. And you're like, yeah, dude, I'm a I'm a D1 recruit from Atlanta. And people are like, oh really? Actually, we play football. You know, we we're on varsity. Do you wanna run some do you wanna do some routes real quick? You're like uh, yeah, I mean, de- definitely, yeah. Whatever you you want, man. I'll 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 do it. Dude. I don't care. I'm I'm a D1 recruit, so I don't really care. And then this type of shit, this type of shit happens. <laughs> gotta feel bad for him, dude. You gotta feel bad, dude. Whew. Someone commented saying that Streetlight has offers. Recruiting offers. All right, I gotta get out of here. So fucking. It's always white people doing this type of shit, man. Making us all look bad. Like what the fuck, dude? Get 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 your shit straight, man. What are you doing? Get back to your sales job, dude. Get get the fuck back to selling goddamn. Whatever, pencils or knives and shit, door to door. Stop doing this type of shit where you're flying, hurting yourself, making us all look bad. Jesus. Making us all look bad. Just go ahead and fucking be a carpenter or something, man. Why are you trying to do this bullshit? If you guys don't know who Speed is, he's one of the funniest streamers ever. I never watch his streams because, I don't know, I don't really go on Twitch that much anyway. I, either way. Uh, he's a streamer. I always see his shit on my, on my timeline, my For You page. And he's eating <laughs> Indian food for the first time. If I, it, dude, I would pay like a thousand bucks to be able to like taste Indian food for the first time again. I, I can taste it again and again. I know how it tastes. It tastes amazing. But to have it for the first time again... Oh my god. Bismillah. My man just said Bismillah? Bro, dude. Give this guy yo, I gotta take I gotta hang out with this man. What the fuck? Jesus. What a, a, a an excellent man. I mean Indians aren't Muslim, but I mean I know Pakistanis could be. But Jesus. Oh actually no, there's some Indians that aren't Muslim. There's a very select few, but he probably, this might be a Pakistani or Indian food. I have no idea. He said, he took a, but the thing is, 
You're supposed to say Bismillah before you take a bite, but hey, I'll take it, dude. Great guy. Great guy. Hell yeah. Please. It's not spicy. It's not spicy. You got to eat spicy Indian food if you're going to eat Indian food, let's be honest. It's not spicy. And I got extra spicy. Oh, it's spicy. <laughs> oh, it's spicy. <laughs> oh, I was about to go off, dude. All right, hell yeah. Okay. Uh, next video, guys. Hell yeah. Then after that, immediately right to the throat. So they can't breathe, can't breathe, can't breathe. Then two right here. Then you got to catch them off guard. So. He, he, caught, he caught me off guard, but the fact that the dummy is also wearing a backwards hat, I feel like that's his hat, and he's like, I want my dummy to look just like me, so he's like secretly kissing himself. Yeah, anyways, next video. So much to unpack in this video, dude. First off, like, is this staged? Probably. But what the fuck, man? I mean, like, you understand the guy, like, the, I I was never a big... Yeah, that's probably staged. This guy just walks in on this, but... Anyway, if it's staged, fuck it, I'll, I'll go. There's no way we're fucking driving right now, bro. We can't see shit. Hey, 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 I, oh my god, dude. I never understood why, like, people love to be in boats. You know, the ocean's scary. They're fucking dangerous. Not that many people have their boating license, right? And plus, you got dumbass kids hanging out with you. If you're getting drunk on the boat, some dumb shit's gonna happen like this. I can't, I can't imagine myself being on that boat, enjoying my time. I really can't. So I, I, I'm trying to realize, like, who are these kids? What the hell are they in life, right? They're fucking trust fund kids, right? All in, like, a fraternity in, like, Florida or some shit. Go to FSU. I'm probably hitting it right on the fucking money right now. All right. Next video, ladies and gentlemen. I Who cares? Our cat right there. Look at her stalking. This is the last video, too. Where's it at? The bird. God. Get that fucker. Just closing in the distance. Oh, come on. Get it. Oh, my God. No way. No way. Are you kidding me? He got it. Dude, no one understands that cats are still like alien predators, bro. I swear to God. If you ever look at a cat like at night, like let's say you turn off all your lights or whatever. If you look at a cat, do they look like they have an alien head? Their eyes are more slanted than others, right? Or other pets, right? And they just look like they're fucking looking into your soul dude like they just i don't think they're from this goddamn planet man i swear to god one of the many reasons why egyptians like fucking prayed to cats or worship them dude. i swear to god they're not like normal i like they're just out of this world weird right but i fucking love my cat dude i'll die for that shit um yeah that was the last video ladies and gentlemen nice little segment just to end for the day i hope you guys enjoyed you know i enjoy watching his tiktoks with you fucking degenerates Right. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed today's podcast. I don't know. I every single week, I feel like the time I, like, dude, I, I wasted not wasted, but I fucking killed like basically almost an hour, close to an hour and a half. Like just talking usually every week. This is how it is. But it just flies by, man. I don't know. It's like three o'clock right now for me. And I, 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 I feel like I started preparing for the podcast at like 12. Either way, I hope you guys enjoyed the podcast if you did leave a nice rate and review it means a lot okay the ai overlords are asking please edo tell these people please tell these people to fucking give you some love right show some love dudes all right and i know you guys come back every single week watch the podcast show some love by liking the fucking video too so i appreciate the hell out of that and uh just wanted to get pushed into that algorithm man that's all that's all i'm looking for okay and uh yeah but other than that, dudes, 
If this was your first time watching, subscribe, like, comment. If this is your first time listening, like, rate, and review, okay? And the song that you're about to hear is professionally produced, professionally mixed. I play his music every single goddamn week at the end of my podcast. All the music used in my podcast is produced, professionally mixed by himself, Elwo. So the song you're about to hear is going to play right now. (laughs) 